head of state and government from the Global South continue to arrive in Cuba as Havana hosts the G77 plus China summit. The government of the Dominican Republic announced the closing, the closing on Friday of all land, sea and air border with Haiti. The president of Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro, held a meeting with lawmakers of the National People's Power of China to threaten cooperation and friendship ties with the Asian Yayan. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Ana Marrero from the Telesur headquarters in Caracas, Venezuela. We'll be good with the news. Stay with us. Head of state and government from the Global South continue to arrive in Cuba as Havana hosts the G77 and China summit. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres and Rwanda's President Paul Kagame arrived in the Cuban capital on Thursday. Both officials were received with high honors at Jose Martin International Airport. During the next hours, other head of states and representatives of international organizations are expected to arrive in the Caribbean nation. According to the Cuban authorities, around 100 delegations are expected to participate in the G77 and China summit to be held on September 11 and 16 under the theme The Current Challenges of Development, the Role of Science, Technology and Innovation. The UN chief was received by the Minister of Labor and Social Security of the Caribbean Asian, Marta Elena Feito, after his arrival at Jose Martin International Airport, Gutierrez also plans to meet with a UN team in Cuba. On Friday, the Secretary General will call on member states of the G77 and China to advocate for a system based on equality during the opening ceremony of the summit of the G77 and China, the largest group within the United Nations. The government of the Dominican Republic announced a closing on Friday of all land, sea and air border with Haiti. The Dominican president, Luis Abinader, said that the decision will not affect the talks with the neighboring country. The president also assured that next week he will participate in the UN General Assembly where the investment issues with Port Prince will be discussed and clarified that the Dominican Republic will not participate in those actions. As of 6 a.m. tomorrow Friday, the sea, land and air borders of the Dominican Republic with Haiti will be closed. According to the information that we offered to the National Security Council and the planning that was done in that sense, the Ministry of Defense is already prepared and both the Army and the Air Force will be ready to fulfill that order. The government of Colombia acknowledged wrongdoings committed by previous administrations against trade union movements in the context of the armed conflict. During an event held under the slogan of reporting the dreams of freedom, the government of Gustavo Petro initiated a new project that seeks to vindicate the state's position with the different union movements in the country. The movements point out that they have suffered violence since the early 70s and highlight that more than 1,000 teachers were killed during the armed conflict. In this sense, after the meeting, leaders of the movements described Petro's administration as a government of change. For the first time, a government, a government that we recognize as the government of change, recognizes that there have been acts against union leaders and that there must be a process of collective reparation to the union movement and that there must also be a process of individual reparations for all the victims of the conflict in Colombia. 
In Colombia, the army has suspended 10 officers after investigating images of armed soldiers threatening villagers in and other in Colombia that were posted on the social networks. Later, the it was learned that they were members of the Infantry Battalion and 33 Batalla de Junín of the Army 11th Brigade, and they uh, intimidated the inhabitants of the village of El Manso in the jurisdiction of the Tierralta Department of Córdoba. The commander of the Armed Forces, Major General Hilder Giraldo, made a statement in a matter and rejected the actions of the military and in press conference the commander of the Colombian National Army, Major General Luis Mauricio Ospina Gutierrez, added the National Army ratifies its compliance and commitment to zero tolerance for the human rights violation. An inspection commission of the National Army was promptly sent to the scene of the events to carry out the corresponding verifications, and it is appropriate to report that there are 10 committed military personnel who moved away from the institutional policy, the postulates of the National Army, the laws, the doctrine, the norms and the constitutional framework as it has been identified so far. The National Army ratifies the compliance and the commitment of zero tolerance to the violation of human rights, and it is important to clarify that what happens is not part of the education given to the members of the National Army in the schools of formation, training and retraining, as well as in any part of the military doctrine. In Argentina, the Committee of the Chamber of Deputies debates amendments to the income tax law. In a parliamentary session, the Budget and Finance Committee was convened to discuss a bill's date of September the 12th, 2023, which proposed substantial changes to the income tax law and its subsequent amendments. During the meeting, the legislators focused the proposal on having the highest tax costs fall on the taxpayers that generate the highest amount of public revenues. Let's take a very first break, but remember you can now join us on our TikTok account as Alucid English where you'll be able to see news in different formats, news updates and more. Stay tuned for more news. Welcome back to From the South. The President of Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro, offered a press conference from Beijing on Thursday in which he made a balance of his official tour of China that at latest was a week. Almost a week, my pardon. The Venezuelan head of state emphasized that uh, with the meeting he held with his Chinese counterpart, Xi Jinping, the bilateral relationship was uh, elevated to the foolproof and all weather strategic partnership. Within this framework, a total of 31 cooperation agreements were signed during the 17th meeting of the China Venezuela High Level Commission. The Venezuelan president highlighted the Asian Yayan solidarity with Venezuela by condemning the unilateral sanctions and sending medicines during the COVID-19 pandemic. We will always remember the support of China condemning the criminal sanctions against Venezuela. Facing those sanctions, and we will always remember for all time the solidarity of China so that medicines, antivirals, and vaccines could reach Venezuela in the worst moment of the COVID-19. And the president of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro, affirmed that together with the Chinese governments, they agreed that the, to work within the framework of the United Nations to condemn the unilateral coercive measures used by the United States and its allies. To continue denouncing within the framework of the UN sanctions, blockades, financial, commercial 
and economic persecution, damages, crimes against humanity, against people through economic warfare. So we have ratified the strengthening of the Group of Defenders of the United Nations Charter between China and Venezuela, and to make it the central element of strategy so that sooner rather than later the UN condemns and reverses the systems of unilateral coercive measures. Afterwards, President Nicolás Maduro held a meeting with the Assembly of the National People's Power of China to strengthen cooperation and friendship ties with the Asian Giant. The Venezuelan president uh, described as successful and productive uh, the meeting with representatives of the Republic Powers of China, the president of the Standing Committee of the Assemblies, Aoleji. Likewise, the head of the Beijing uh, Parliament highlighted the historical ties of friendship between Venezuela and China and uh, saluted the efforts of the Venezuelan head of state in firmly promoting the friendly relations uh, between both countries uh, for a long time. I am happy to be in this assembly. I have visited on many occasions as a deputy, as president of the National Assembly of Venezuela and as president of the Republic, because I appreciate the work you do for the development of China, for the strengthening of China, and I appreciate the friendship we have cultivated between the National People's Assembly of China and the people and the National Assembly of Venezuela. I want to convey to you a message of solidarity greetings from the president of the National Assembly of Venezuela, Comrade Jorge Rodriguez, and the entire legislative body of the country. This visit we have may have been extraordinary. In this context, the Venezuelan popular leader also described the history of Asia as historic due to the 31 agreement reached with the action giant. All the working days, all the agreements, all the plans, all the documents approved and signed in Shenzhen, in Shanghai, in Shandong. We arrived in Shenzhen in the middle of a storm. We landed in the middle of a heavy rain and a truly historic tour began. And then our arrival in Beijing, the working day, the signing of 31 agreements. For her part, uh, on Thursday, the Executive Vice President of Venezuela, Delcy Rodriguez, visited the Chinese company City Construction Group. Venezuela is threatening cooperation with China in, house, in housing construction as part of a bilateral agreement signed by both presidents in recent days. The Vice President's visit uh, preceded that the President of the Nation signed 31 cooperation agreements in infrastructure, technology, education, and the Bell and Road Initiative. City Group is a Chinese construction company aimed to generate sustainable shareholder value. And as part of the Venezuelan delegation, the Vice President for Social and Territorial Socialism, Mervin Maldonado, referring to the importance of the strategic alliances between China and Venezuela. With this historic working tour of President Nicolás Maduro and President Xi Jinping, the strategic alliance has been raised to a higher level. And within the social framework, we have worked the President of the Republic, together with Director General of the International Poverty Reduction Center of China, where we have seen and studied the model of how China has managed to leave more than 98 million Chinese out of extreme poverty in the last eight years, and that this has generated a great global impact. For his part, the Venezuelan Minister for the Protective Agriculture the and Land, uh, Wilmar Castro Soteldo, highlighted the new alliances between China and the state of Santa Monagas in the Venezuelan territory. The brotherhood with the state of Anzuategui and Monagas in Venezuela was ratified and strengthened, where President Maduro has launched a new special agri-food economic zone. And in this way, we are going to work with a technopolitical team from both countries to strengthen investment, development, growth, and progress in food production for export. And we stayed on topic because in this context, Beijing affirmed on Thursday that during the visit of the Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro, a strategic partnership between China and Venezuela was a ship. 
This visit by Venezuelan President Maduro has achieved substantial results. The two sides issue a joint statement on the establishment of an all-weather strategic partnership between PRC and Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. We signed dozens of cooperation agreements jointly reaching consensus in various fields, including the economy and trade, culture, tourism, airspace, civil aviation, science and technology, and the media. Chinese uh, Foreign Ministry spokeswomen add that China will continue to support Venezuela's commitments to protect its sovereignty and promote cooperation at the highest level. China will continue to support Venezuela in its efforts to protect its national sovereignty and social stability, also supporting Venezuela's right to undertaking to oppose external interference. We believe that this visit will effectively promote bilateral ties and cooperation in all fields to achieve a higher level and broader scope of development, also bringing more benefits to the people of the two countries. Let's take our last break, but before we invite you to visit our YouTube channel at Telesur English, where you'll be able to watch on interviews, top stories, special broadcasts and more. Hit the subscribe button and active the notification bell to stay up to date on the world's most recent events. One financial break, don't go away. Welcome back. The Mars Foreign Minister Tausche met with his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov during an official visit to Moscow on Thursday. The two sides discussed trade, economic and defense cooperation as well as the geopolitical situation in the Saudi East Asian region. In the meeting, Lavrov criticized NATO for trying to spread its influence in the region. On the other hand, Tausche thanks at the Russians for sending aid to his country after it was hit by Cyclone Moshe in May. Unfortunately, at the moment, these mechanisms are being challenged in the context of the so-called Indo-Pacific strategies of the West, which tries to block elements in the Asian Pacific region to implement mechanisms that are aimed at holding back other countries. Mechanisms that, generally speaking, are competing and trying to rob the ASEAN of its traditional leading role regarding issues of security and cooperation in this region. Extreme danger, of course, is posed by NATO's openly announced plans to infiltrate the region and create their own rules there. The government of Armenia received peace proposals from Azerbaijan and will respond within a responsible period of time. At the meeting of the Council of Minister Armenian Prime Minister, Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan reported that he received a new comments on the treaty on the regulation of relations and on the establishment of the peaceful relations between the two countries. So they will work to provide their observations to the Azerbaijan side. In this regard, Pashinyan noted that the situation on the border remains tense and his troops and military equipment are deployed along the border zone with Armenia and on the line of the country in Nagorno-Karabakh. On Thursday, Egyptian Foreign Minister Samed Shukri met with his French counterpart Catherine Collinan in Cairo. During their meeting, the two ministers discussed bilateral relations between Egypt and France, as well as the leaders of developments in the regions, including the Palestinian issue. In this context, as part of a joint news conference, uh, Shekri extended his uh, condolences to the people of Libya, who recently faced massive floodings uh, that resulted in the loss of thousands of lives, as well as the Moroccan nation, who are uh, grappling with the aftermath of the devastating earthquake that saw last week. Iran and Iraq announced that the implementation of the security agreement reached to confront terrorism will start on Friday. 
The announcement was made by the diplomatic head of both nations who met this Wednesday in Tehran. Both the Iraqi Foreign Minister the Fuad Hussein and his Iranian counterpart Hussein Amir Abdullahin spoke positively of the agreement signed earlier this year to protect their common border, especially in the Kurdish region of northern Iraq. We have received very good information about the elimination of terrorist groups from areas near the borders of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Their relocation deep into Iraqi territory and the Kurdish region of the Republic of Iraq and the efforts to disarm them and fully implement the clauses of the security agreement between the two countries. The next steps will be fully implemented in the coming days within the framework of the security agreement. Meanwhile, Iraqi Foreign Minister Fouad Hussein stressed the viability of dialogue as a means of obtaining the permits and contents in order to confront the irregular groups that use the border crossing. The issue I want to emphasize is that the relations between the two countries are good and we hope that if there are some problems they will be solved through dialogue and negotiations. Sometimes we see that the sovereignty of Iraq, the Kurdistan region of Iraq, is threatened with bombing or a military attack. I think we should move away from these tools because we have all the ways. We have a way to talk and negotiate. We have a security agreement. In Libya, three days after the, the poor city of Derna was practically whipped out by the, the storm Daniel, the survivors of the catastrophe are looking for their loved ones. Uh, storm Daniel not only the province as a living city with, it, the, with all its uh, fury, but also burns the drama of the resulting floods uh, and goals for everything in their path. Uh, many people lost uh, thousands of family members in the catastrophe. Islamic Day Relief were on a later Wednesday that figured is likely to double or the even quadruple. We have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. You can also join us on our socials, we're on Facebook and Twitter, and on Instagram as well. For the Lesson English from the South, I'm Ana Marrero. Thank you for watching.